Hi, uh, my name is Don Wake. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And today I wanna show you how uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, with the Esmeralda Container Platform is helping you to utilize the, uh, the power of the Kubernetes uh, container orchestration software uh, in ways that haven't been available before. So to get us started, to give you an idea of how Hewlett Packard um, thinks about things like data science or, or any kind of uh, uh, organization that has to utilize a lot of people to, to do these data heavy types of applications. Uh, for example, let's just take data science, for example, and, and maybe machine learning, um, you know, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, it's a team sport. You have data scientists that are building models and training models. You have data analysts that then are taking those uh, those models, maybe monitoring them or uh, you know, building applications using that data. You also have a group of software engineers that are doing the continuous integration and continuous development, and they need access to tools like Jenkins and GitHub or Bitbucket, that type of a thing. And then you also have the operations team, uh, which maybe could be called a systems administrator or um, you know, somebody that's required to make sure the systems stay online, whether those systems are you know, in a given data center or online, maybe in a favorite public cloud. So when you have all of these people and you have all of these different uh, pieces of hardware and software that you need to organize, you need a central control plane. And Kubernetes is great at organizing the containerized software, but what about all the other things like different role-based access, like for data engineers and scientists and app developers and DevOps? All of these different individuals do not need the same access to the same tools. Um, for example, a data scientist probably doesn't want to worry about how uh, to import a given cluster, whether it was created on a cloud or on the on premises in your local data center. That person just wants to create a, a machine learning model. So with the container platform that we're showing here, we allow you to use multiple different clusters of and even different versions of Kubernetes um, orchestrated CNCF certified containerized clusters. So you can have a multi-tenant environment. So multiple people could be using the same hardware, but not have the same access to, for example, the Kubernetes namespaces. The Esmeral data fabric is also part of the, the Esmeral software solution. And it offers a, a enterprise grade storage for doing things like replication, a global namespace and mirrors and encryption at rest. And you can have all of these things The you can have the separation of the compute and storage, managing the data on premises or in your favorite public cloud. Um, so there's a lot of things that having a central control plane wraps around Kubernetes orchestration. So let me just show you some quick ways that uh, you can integrate your standard Kubernetes administration with a container platform and use it in any way you see fit. So what I'm showing here, I'm on, let's pretend I'm a, a systems engineer or perhaps a systems administrator, and I'm connected to my Kubernetes platform. Um, and so I'll use a simple command called the kube control command or kubectl. And this is connected over the network because I've downloaded a plugin and I've authenticated myself and taken care of all of the security things so that I can, you know, communicate with my, my Kubernetes cluster wherever it is. So just get pods commands, one of the simplest commands every Kubernetes expert wants to do. Um, you know, at the atomic level, that's how Kubernetes handles um, applications, containerized applications is at the pod level. So this is the first thing I'm just kind of looking around at my, uh, at my namespace and, and what I have access to. There's another uh, command here to just give you an idea and highlight multi-tenancy. Um, when you've set up your context, this is the particular Kubernetes namespace that me as let's just say I'm the ML ops system administrator and I have access to this and I can do things to help data scientists utilize this cluster to do their job. So this just gives you an idea, you know, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, these are the kind of things you want to be able to do as an administrator. Um, and perhaps you, you do things that are even much more complicated, um, like using REST API commands and writing Ansible scripts. But let's say you now wanna abstract things away a little bit and 
put on your uh, system admin hat and log into our web UI. So this is another way to interact with the platform. Logging in with Active Directory credentials. The Active Directory credentials that were set up by my organization before I even installed a container platform, for example. And what you see here is this very uh, rich set of tools that you can use to import clusters, create new clusters, manage clusters, um, and then also create the namespaces, the Kubernetes you know, tenants is what we like to call them because it's really multi-tenancy environment. I have a lot of tenants here um, and I logged in. I, ha I happen to have site admin privileges. You can see all of the different resources and you, know, you can quickly see, oh, I've got some clusters that might be pushing the envelope on, um, on resource utilization. Maybe I need to go in and uh, add some more servers. But what we're gonna look at is what we, uh, we showed on that command line is the MLOps tenant. So this is a tenant or Kubernetes namespace that utilizes the Esmeral software um, that puts together a whole bunch of uh, things in context related to a full ML pipeline. So as a Kubernetes administrator, I may wanna come in here and just make sure my pod utilization is looking good. Okay, this pod is using this much uh, of the cores and CPU limits, but uh, you know, to kind of, to bring it back to, um, to what we were looking at there on the command line, I looked at, at what pods I had access to. And if you go here to one of the contexts of machine learning is a Kubernetes, uh, I'm sorry, a, a Jupyter notebook. And I have a service endpoints here. I can get all kinds of details here. And if you remember, we did our get pods. There's our pod name. This is a Jupyter notebook. So you get uh, an idea that if you wish to be a systems administrator, you can abstract a lot of the details about how you instantiate the pods or uh, what servers are where. Um, so it's a really nice uh, feature rich interface, um, but also supports uh, full REST API, as I mentioned. And with something like MLOps, you know, you're really taking a lot of the abstraction, uh, making it very abstract that you don't have to worry about which pod did a, you know, what's the association with the pods in terms of um, my, my machine learning or my training engine. Here, I just have access to, to endpoints. So as a, as a data scientist, um, I don't have to worry about a lot of the details. I can go straight to my notebook. And in fact, I could, um, I could send this link to a uh, data scientist and say, hey, um, in your cluster, you asked me to spin up your Jupyter notebook. And uh, here I, I connected it to uh, your uh, GitHub. So here's the URL. They just click on that. They now have access to a cluster, a very powerful cluster, and they can run their code in this Jupyter notebook. Um, on servers that are much more powerful and potentially have GPUs, et cetera. So that's just a quick tour to kind of show you some things you could do um, using the, the container platform to, or to you know, organize the, the Kubernetes orchestration. There's lots of more things I'd love to talk about. And I, I think if you found this interesting, I'm gonna point you to some of our resources online. Um, we have a demo portal where you can have, actually get access to you know, an environment that you can play with. Um, and of course, you could go to our online documentations and there's, there's always lots more to learn. There's, uh, I even gave a reference here to give you an example of how easy it is to you know, get your Kube CTL uh, plug in so that if you wanted to use your laptop like I was doing and not have to be remoted in through a server or something, you could do that. So that's, uh, that's all I wanted to show you today. And it's kind of like a lightning uh, amount of information and lots more to learn, but hopefully I whetted your appetite and uh, please uh, feel free to contact me or anyone at HPE with, with, the, uh, with that uh, container platform at hpe.com and we'll, we'll get you some more information. Thank you for watching.